Richard, we're here at the McLaren Technology Centre, but today we're really talking about McLaren Applied. What is the relationship between the two different companies? So McLaren Applied are the uh, sole suppliers for the uh, standard uh, ECU, what we call the SECU. So the standard ECU uh, is, is what McLaren Applied uh, ultimately provide, not just to McLaren Racing, but across the entire field and others as well. Um, other, other companies such as uh, you know, uh, various other racing series. But um, the, the relationship is, is about uh, the, you know, the brand partnership that we have with McLaren and that sort of level of quality that we try and instill in some of our products. Okay. And one of the questions that I often get asked when I show uh, McLaren applied technology on a Formula One car that's not a McLaren Formula One car is, well, doesn't that give McLaren advantage because, you know, is it the same company, is it the same engineers? What is the, the differentiation between the two companies? The companies are very much separate. They are very much separate and we have to remain, as a, as a sole supplier and, and obviously governed by the FIA, we have to remain very impartial to, uh, to how we treat our suppliers, from everybody from McLaren to Ferrari right to, to, to the remainder of the other teams. Uh, very impartial, all the support is the same. The support at the track is, uh, covers quite a few, uh, few of the teams and uh, you know, they're free to move between, between teams as and when support's needed. Very impartial. And the relationship in terms of business has changed uh, in recent months between uh, McLaren Group and McLaren Applied. That's right, yeah. So McLaren Applied have, uh, have, have, uh, have moved out of the group. Um, they've, been, uh, they've been purchased and uh, allows us a greater freedom to, uh, to move out into uh, other industries uh, and not just potentially motorsport. And the McLaren Applied has grown up from quite a long time in the past actually and yeah. uh, you've gone through various name changes um, going back to the earliest days as I, as I recall it was Tag Electronics. Yeah Tag Electronics a uh, very long time ago um, but I think what uh, the, 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 big, the, the big change was around 2007-2008 when the FIA tendered for the standard ECU and at the time McLaren Electronics um, which is now McLaren Applied uh, won that tender and it's been that way ever since. So about 13 years uh, or so, uh, McLaren uh, Applied have been uh, supplying uh, these cars with the technology that we see on the TV today. So the ECU you now provide to all the Formula One teams has gone through a few revisions, um, but it still has its roots back in those days. And it has a peculiar, almost like a, a chunk of Toblerone shape. Yeah. Um, what's the history behind that? So it is, it is still called a TAG. It's still called a TAG. Uh, 320B is the current unit. It, it does look like a triangle shape ECU. And that was designed so um, ab ab around packaging. Uh, the original packaging was it, it would fit in the keel of the of the of the cockpit, um, where the keel, from an aerodynamics perspective, uh, where the keel would 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 uh, would be formed within the chassis, um, and it would fit triangularly within that within that form, and it's kept its form, and it's quite an iconic, uh, iconic iconic design, and and it fits most teams. I mean, a lot of teams have it on different sides of the car, whether in the side pods. Some teams have it within the cockpit, um, but it all depends. But it allows people to, to, uh, to, to optimise their, their package. So I think we're all familiar with ECUs in cars. In Formula One, how much does the ECU uh, perform in terms of controlling the car and how much is done without the ECU? So the, the ECU uh, controls all of the major um, uh, sub-assemblies or systems within the car. It controls obviously the engine, it controls anything like the MGUH and K, it uh, also controls things like brake by, uh, brake by wire, um, which, is, uh, which is quite a, a safety critical uh, part of the car as well. And all of those um, sort of um, base level components within, within the system are supplied by McLaren Applied for the teams to uh, add on their own calibrations. So they have a different layer that they can access and, and change it up uh, uh, to, suit the, to suit the car's performance. But um, the majority of the ECU is, is, um, is, is a fixed component and a lot of the software that's supplied is, is, a, is a fixed base level software that allows teams to adjust calibrations. So you mentioned software there and I know that's quite an important part of this as you come away from the hardware itself. So what, what are the key applications that teams use so to either code or to look at the data that's run through so, the ECU? So um, there are two distinct types of of software we use, uh, certainly trackside, uh, one of them is System Monitor, 
uh, system monitor is, is just that. It monitors the system, it allows you to change calibrations, it allows you to update codes, uh, it allows you to change things like uh, you know, uh, diff parameters, or it allows you to change gearbox ratios, or it allows you to change lots of different things. Um, that's system monitor, um, and it's great for when the car is technically plugged into the umbilical, and you can see the car live, um, and obviously download and offload and upload any, any code or download data. So uh, system monitor is very key um, to, to this, and then obviously once the data is offloaded or within a uh, telemetry environment, i.e. Uh, when the car is going around track, we use another piece of software from McLaren Applied called Atlas. Atlas is a very powerful um, data analytical software uh, package that uh, allows us to um, really, uh, really do a deep dive into the car's performance. And the majority, well, in fact, all of the F1 teams will use Atlas. And again, it's supported trackside by McLaren Applied. And that's the piece of software that you see with the driver in the cockpit with a couple of pieces of paper, the, the squiggy lines and the overlays. That, that's what's powering that piece of that's paper right. effectively. That's right, that's right. So the system monitor side of things is usually in, 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 in the, you know, on the racks in the back rooms. Um, but out, out front, uh, the engineers are looking at the data that is brought through the standard ECU onto Atlas. And having looked through the McLaren Applied Online catalogue, the ECU doesn't exist in isolation. There's a whole heap of stuff yeah. around it, sensors, hub interfaces, right. bits and pieces like that. So there's a, a wide range, again, born of necessity, I guess, from McLaren Applied to, to, to power all of this. Yeah, I mean, we, we've understood customers' requirements and um, there's a lot of those components that w which are in the standard ECU package, but there's a lot of those components that can be bought separately. But the, the, the great thing that, uh, that, that, that we, can, we can provide is, is continuity, right? Continuity in quality, continuity in brand, and continuity about what we supply uh, in relation to the standard ECU. I wouldn't necessarily say it's plug and play, but it, it's easily adapted and consequently easily supported trackside. And then comes to the, the crunch question is in terms of numbers and money. Um, if a team wanted to get the, the full package to build a car, what, what sort of figures are we talking about? So again, it all depends on, on the team and how established that team is. You know, do they have a long standing history uh, and therefore have maybe plenty of spares on the shelf or um, they're able to rotate uh, what they do have in terms of mileage. But, you know, a software package and a hardware package, including licenses, and we were talking team side licenses, we're talking track side support, um, you know, you're, 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 you're sub a million pounds, you know, in terms of um, um, the equipment that we, we can supply. At the same time, it could be as little as two to three hundred thousand. Um, if you just want to top up what you have. Um, so it's, it actually represents good value in the grand scheme of what it costs to run a Formula One team.